Margie Candelaria is um, a housing specialist for the criminal justice population, and she is with MD Consulting, does pre-sentence consulting and training, and she was instrumental in setting up one of the substance abuse programs with Valley State Prison. She currently has seven homes um, for the criminal justice population for people that are re-entering after prison and jail, and she's had a very high success rate of reducing recidivism, substance abuse, and the spread of HIV AIDS. Margie, we're really pleased to have you with us, and I have a question for you. What services do you most frequently call upon to assist a re-entering individual, and how can our communities and institutions improve or cooperate to assist parolees? How's everybody doing? My name is Margie, and uh, I kind of want to, you know, the judge said something like really that really got through to my awareness, and I believe that it's the key to what um, it is that we do and that's treating people as if they're already there, treating people as if they are of value so they will feel valued, which in turn will cha uh, change behavior in a lot of our population. I have created in my journey, my path has taken a lot of different roads. I was instrumental in doing a lot of training the STAR teachers and cognitive skills processes, the pre-release teachers, um, the first activation of the first women's substance abuse program working with OSAP and Walden House and Department of Corrections in setting that up. And I think that the first thing that's really important, we talked about communication, you know, and in that communication consistency with that, because it's like if you go to a training or you go to a conference in another country, you have an interpreter there. If the, if the language is Chinese, you have an interpreter that is speaking Chinese so that, to help us to understand. My husband just went to Russia to a conference and they had interpreters there to interpret what he was talking about. And I think that that's the very same thing with our population. How do we talk about create community partnerships where we have people in there that are interpreting to our population? Because a lot of the principles and a lot of the beliefs that our population holds to be the truth consistently gets them back in homeless shelters, battered women's shelters, penitentiaries, county jails. I started, I, I work with um, criminal justice and men and women. I do all the assessments in the East Bay. My coworkers are here, Seneca, Hector, Big O. We've struggled with this population. I believe it's one of the hardest populations to work with, people that are coming out of prison who are living with HIV and AIDS and the principles that they're living by and they believe about themselves, that they're worthless, no one's ever going to change, why even bother, why even get up and try, that they're hopeless. Um, I created some houses. Um, I've trained with the Federal Bureau of Prisons, all that we implemented code programs, breaking barriers, and a lot of different other cognitive skills programs from Leavenworth to Lompoc to Kansas City, um, in a lot of different areas. And what I found in my journey and on my path was there, there was a lot of curriculum that was for everybody as a whole. And all the curriculum always had an S with it and a line for she. And as we know, as I know, that it's very specific. Women have very specific and complex issues that have earned their seat in the Department of Corrections. So um, I created my first house on a hope, on a vision, that I wanted to work with women. My houses are named Deb's Place in memory of my sister who died in prison from a heroin overdose. That's a whole nother issue of things that might n need to happen. I believe that there should be detox in prison. I, should believe that there, I believe that there should be outreach. I believe that um, the packed programs and the things that the Department of Corrections is creating as a collaborative effort should be duplicated inside of the prisons. I sh should believe we as a whole need to come into the prisons and we need to have Social Security there. I believe that we need to have someone from GA because when my people were coming fresh out of prison and they've walked on the streets for 24 hours because they don't have any housing and the only thing that they have is a prison ID and then they get into my house, they find their way to Deb's place and number one what they do is that I utilize the internet and I get on DMV California.gov and I set them up an appointment for DMV um, Social Security they can't get Social Security they can't a get access to social services because they don't have an ID so how do we re create, you know, we're talking about doing that in the prisons, how do we start right here in the community? How do the community, how do the people in the times of war, people set landmines to keep the enemy away? Who's the better person to come dig up those landmines but the people that have set them? So how do we start within the county jail and in, inside of the county jail system when someone receives a sentence to the Department of Corrections to do the assessment, the needs assessment? 
right there from the county jail to take that time off when they're sitting over in RC, doing all that dead time, not getting their half time off. How do we send people into the county jails when they uh, get a sentence to the Department of Corrections and they're recruited like Lorna so vividly and eloquently depicted a picture of what happens when somebody goes into the Department of Corrections. What, what is expect, expectation? What happens? They get recruited into the insanity. They don't have a chance to participate in education. They don't have a chance to go participate in the church. So how do we go inside of the county jails and educate? When I first did training for the staff, for the Office of Substance Abuse Programs for staff, and um, went into the administration building and we did, what do you think? Because it, we're all full of hope, right, to go into there, start these seven abuse these programs. What do you think that's gonna greet you at the other side when you get into these institutions? Oh, people that are open and willing and eager, wrong. See, because inside of our prisons, we form a family system in there inside of the prisons. So I can probably talk all day on those issues. So the things that I do in my house, as I'll talk from experience, I use the community-based organizations that already have their funding in place, that already have programs and they need the numbers and they need the people. Um, I think that we need a consistent communication. A lot of my guys or girls come out and they don't have any medication and that's the reality of it. You know, we try to be the best that we can be, but they come out, triple CMS, diagnosed with mental health issues, schizophrenia, and they don't have any medication on them. They don't have any meds. So what do I do? I get on the telephone, I get on the internet, I call Tri-Cities because I'm over in Alameda County. I go to Tri-Cities. Um, medical center and they can get in there without any kind of money for six months. They go in there, they get their diagnosis, they get their meds. I use East Bay Community Recovery pro Project that's in East Bay and um, they get diagnosed again, their mental health issues, their groups, and it doesn't take any money. Our people that come out in parole come out with $200 gate money if they're lucky, if they don't live in Northern California and they're in the Southern prison. So they come out with relatively nothing. They didn't come out with no clothes. They don't. There's a place called Wardrobes for Opportunities that I network with them to get them some clothes. They're coming out with some sweats. They're coming out with some. So when they're walking down the streets in the community, do you think that they're going to get invited by anybody that's going down the street to say, hey, come and participate in this or that? I think the gentleman here, the pastor, made a really good point about the churches. How do we involve the churches? I house parolees that nobody else wants in their community, and I'll just put it out like that. How do we address those issues with those parolees that are coming out where nobody else wants to house them because of the crimes that they've committed? And we're getting more laws that are more and more stringent, and pretty soon we're gonna have to put them out on ships in the middle of the ocean. You know, how do we integrate them back into society? So for me, I use anything. You know, I'm from the club of no matter what. So anything, I do an assessment when they come in, I do my own assessment on a piece of paper, GED, high school diploma, and then I start directing them to where that they need to go. I keep communication with parole, they hear from me all the time, well what about, I thought we were gonna, you know, I'm the little pest here, but I continue because I think with consistency that this is how this process works. And I need to mention that I'm also a former consumer of the correctional services. And I was the first woman in the state of California to be sentenced under three strikes you're out and received an alternate sentence to Delancey Street. I got 42 years and four months suspended. So, so I am the person, if all the psychologists were sitting at a table and you were reading the files and said, what do you think that happened to this woman? It would not be a speaker on a panel with criminal justice and community advocates to try to effect change with our population because change is possible. Thank you. Thank you, Margie. A lot of good points and a lot of good questions that we have to address.